Well, it looks like A Nightmare on Elm Street is coming back to theaters. How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and if you like monsters, slashers, pretty much any movie shot during, set during, or inspired by the 1980s, this is the channel for you. So there's been a brief hiatus in slasher movies ever since Halloween Ends came out. All we really have to look forward to right now, officially, is the Camp Crystal Lake TV series that A24 teamed up with Universal to make that's coming to Peacock, which, you know, I've done a video on that. I've actually, I think, done a couple videos on that, and I am excited for it, but it's not exactly what I was hoping for with the return of Jason and Friday the 13th. I know that beggars can't be choosers with that franchise right now because of the whole lawsuit and how everything shook out, but I've also heard a lot is happening behind the scenes with Friday the 13th regarding a new movie, a new game, a remaster of the game that everyone knows and loves now that the license has expired with Gun Media, and yeah, a lot is happening right now with Friday the 13th, which, you know, I'll do another video about that after this one because as you saw in the thumbnail and the title, this is all about the return of A Nightmare on Elm Street. So the whole situation surrounding A Nightmare on Elm Street is actually pretty weird because unlike Friday the 13th, it doesn't really seem like there's any legal troubles or anything like that holding this franchise up. The last news we heard is that Wes Craven's estate was taking pitches on A Nightmare on Elm Street just like they did with Scream, which ultimately got us Scream 5 and 6. And then we kind of didn't hear anything other than, you know, TV shows were pitched, movies were pitched. It sounded like they liked some and didn't like others. And then yeah, ever since then, it's been radio silent. But the whole situation has been extremely strange because there's no legal stuff or anything holding this franchise up from what we know. And you know, Halloween came out and there was a whole trilogy of movies that were all pretty profitable and Scream 5 and 6 were both very profitable. And horror right now seems to be the only reliable genre that you can just throw up into theaters at any time around the year. Unless your budget is $150 million like the Haunted Mansion movie or you just flat out don't market your movie like Cobweb. But for the most part, it's really seemed as of late that horror movies are kind of immune to the box office slump. There is one production studio though that has been gunning pretty aggressively for A Nightmare on Elm Street for a while now, and that is Blumhouse. Jason Blum has done multiple interviews about this franchise where, you know, around the time Stranger Things 4 was coming out and Robert England was brought back for that, Jason Blum was kind of talking about how he was very confident that if they were able to get the rights for A Nightmare on Elm Street, he would have no trouble bringing back Robert England. And to be fair, his argument was that he brought back Jamie Lee Curtis to Halloween, and he also brought back Ellen Burstyn to The Exorcist Believer. But other than that, we really haven't heard much about this franchise. That is until tonight when I sat down at my computer to start playing some Diablo 4, and then I was scrolling through Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, and I not only saw some leakers talking about a new nightmare on Elm Street, but also some people that are like in the horror influencer world. I don't really know what to say here, but it's like some people who are pretty involved with the nightmare on Elm Street fandom were talking about how they've also heard that stuff was happening with this franchise behind the scenes. I've also heard of some stuff happening behind the scenes from some trustworthy people, but I just wanted to get a little bit more confirmation before I made a video about all of this. So I kind of collected a few of the tweets and I sent them to my friend Critical Overlord because this guy is right way more often than he's not. And he's leaked some stuff in DMs to me about movies that I really wouldn't make videos about that all pretty much came true. So I was like, yeah, if anyone's gonna know, it's probably this guy. And he basically confirmed that, yeah, the source who's telling us about this stuff is pretty trustworthy. Like they can be wrong like anyone else can, of course. I always say take leaks with a huge grain of salt because this stuff can change on a dime. But also he provided me with some evidence of this person being right in the past about the boys spinoff show, Gen V, I think it's called. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this leak. And I just wanted to lead up to this because you know, when you hear about leaks and rumors, it's hard to really trust them at this point in time, but it seems like everything leaks these days. And I wanted to tell you why I'm kind of trusting these leaks. Anyway, the account that tweeted this out is called The V Scooper, and they said, A Nightmare on Elm Street requel is in development. Blumhouse has been secretly working on making a requel of the first entry of this saga. This revival is high priority. We don't have a date yet, but we shouldn't expect it so far away. And then someone named Flyboy Chris, I can't believe I have to read these Twitter names, responded, so I'm guessing it'll have to star England, and maybe by the end he passes the torch unless they already have a trilogy of sorts planned out like they did with Halloween. Very cautious about this, was not a fan of Halloween Ends at all. I mean, 
mean, no one can just let it go. They got to point out that they didn't like Halloween ends. I get it. Okay. I get it. Anyway, the tweet ends with hopes this leads to a versus movie though, with a great gift from Freddy versus Jason. And yeah, I love Freddy versus Jason. I think it's completely underrated. It came out at the perfect time for me when I saw it with my friends and we watch it every year still. So yeah, I am a Freddy versus Jason, not apologist, like true fan. Anyway, the V scooper responded. Yep. The idea is England returns, but also heard a proposal to make Freddy CGI, but with his voice. Hope they continue with the makeup or actor instead. And yes, Blumhouse wants to make trilogies of everything. So more of this can come. Now there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to start out with the thing that I think is what's going to make everyone's eyebrows raise, which is of course seeing CGI Freddy Krueger. Because honestly, if Blumhouse is involved in this, you look at their mantra, their model, they make cheap movies. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but I'm pretty sure the maximum that they've ever really spent on movies is around 30 or maybe even 40 million dollars. Like I think Halloween ends was probably one of the most expensive movies they ever made. And beyond that, you can look at some of the M night Shyamalan movies. He helped produce Jason Blum. I mean, and M night Shyamalan actually boosted the budgets of those movies by putting up his house for a loan, which, you know, helped him out when he was making the movie and helped him get more creative control. But yeah, for the most part, Blumhouse makes fairly cheap horror movies. So when you hear CGI Freddy Krueger, I mean, all I see when those words are on my phone screen and that tweet is just dollar signs. So yeah, I don't really see Blumhouse fronting the cash to make a CGI Freddy Krueger, right? Like if anything, they'll have a makeup Freddy Krueger and kind of use CGI on him, which is of course what they did to Jackie Earl Haley back in the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street, which I've seen some people try to do the like 10 years later reevaluation and say, oh, everyone was wrong. This movie's awesome. I was always a fan and it's never going to work. That is straight up one of the worst, not only remakes, but worst movies ever. I absolutely despise that movie. I think the reason a rumor like that would be generated though, is because Robert England, of course, when he came back to be in Stranger Things 4 and he was doing a bunch of interviews for that show, everyone was asking him, hey, uh, would you come back for a new Nightmare on Elm Street? And basically the answer he's given is that no, he's old, his back hurts. He's like an old man now and he doesn't have it in him to do the insane stunts he was doing for the older Nightmare on Elm Street movies. We also though have to look over at Heather Langenkamp because of course she's just as integral to this franchise as Robert England. She kind of exited it a little bit early but then came back around for Wes Craven's new Nightmare and all of my favorite movies in the franchise have Heather Langenkamp in them at least as a supporting actor. So during Mike Flanagan's Midnight Club press tour thing he was doing people were of course asking her about coming back for a Nightmare on Elm Street and she definitely seemed like she was way more game than Robert England, which makes sense because she's younger than Robert England. And you know, she's seen Jamie Lee Curtis come back to Halloween. She's seen Nev Campbell come back to scream. There's no reason why she shouldn't be able to come back to a nightmare on Elm street. Right. But yeah, going back to Robert England, if he really truly can't do the stunts as much as I'd love to have him in the movie, I think the best thing we could ask for is kind of like what they just did in the twisted metal show. I know this is a terrible example because that show is isn't great, but Will Arnett is the voice of Sweet Tooth and someone else actually plays the character, which, you know, they took the easy route out with that one because Sweet Tooth wears a mask, so they don't have to match up the lip syncing or anything like that. But, you know, there are ways where they could use Robert England's voice, but have an actual actor portraying Freddy on screen, which would really be the best of both worlds here, right? Like if you're going back to the very beginning and starting over with A Nightmare on Elm Street or doing a requel or something like that, you want Freddy to be scared scary to a new group of teenagers. And if he does age at all, I think we'll see him as an old man at the beginning of the movie because everyone kind of forgot about him. But by some twist of fate, he might be able to get one kill done and that kind of puts him back in people's minds. And then we could see him regenerate into sort of a new actor. And honestly, that's really the only believable route I could see this taking that I can think of right now. I would really love to be surprised, of course, because with Halloween 2018, I mean, even from the first trailer and the description of the movie, we were able to guess everything that was going to happen. And not only that movie, but pretty much the entire trilogy, just because it's a slasher movie. It's super simple. It's never really going to get that complicated. Like even when it did get complicated with, you know, Corey helping out Michael Myers, it was never like he was actually going to take over for him. So when you're looking at simple franchises like this, it's nice to be surprised, but you don't want the surprises to come out of left field. And I don't really see Blumhouse doing that with uh, a nightmare on Elm Street after the reception to Halloween ends. But yeah, from what I've heard behind the scenes, there's been a pretty major bidding war on A Nightmare on Elm Street for a long time now. I've heard names like Paramount thrown in the mix, but of course Blumhouse has been aggressively going 
after this franchise because whether you like it or not, they can go to these bigger studios or the rights holders and say, look, we put out Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends, and all of those movies remade their budget, yes, but also made a pretty healthy profit on top of it. And even the least grossing movie in the trilogy, Halloween Ends, was able to recoup not only its budget in theaters, but because of the whole Peacock deal. And then they have all these other original horror movies they put out over the past few years, like The Black Phone, which I know was a huge success, and Insidious 5, which was also a very big success for them. I'm sure they didn't really expect that to do as well as it did, but when you make movies as cheap as Blumhouse does, they don't have to do extremely well to make a profit. So if Blumhouse is coming around to the West Craven estate and saying, look, all of our movies are profitable, we pay respect to the franchises to the point where a lot of these actors like Jamie Lee Curtis and Ellen Burson are happy to come back. That's a really good argument just from a business standpoint that I think would really go a long way in helping them secure these rights. And all they have to say is like, look, if Paramount's in the running for this, look at the last time they made a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Not only was it not profitable, but it essentially killed the franchise. So who do you want, right? The company that killed the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise to make this, or do you want us, the profitable company who knows how to make a modern requel horror movie? Like it's really Blumhouse's bread and butter when you're talking about their higher budget stuff compared to the low budget stuff they usually put out. Obviously the only thing I could see holding this up would be the strike in Hollywood right now, but you know, I think that'll wrap up sooner rather than later. And of course, Blumhouse is really good at getting these movies made within a year. So if the writer's strike wraps up this year and they get going on a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie, I don't think it would really take too long before we actually get to see it come to the big screen. And I know people have a complicated relationship with Blumhouse and I definitely do too. I love a lot of the people who work on the movies and I think Jason Blum is really cool just because he kind of like talks to his community and all the stuff he's kind of been doing with Five Nights at Freddy's I think is awesome. Like how people didn't like the eyes of the animatronics in the first trailer, I guess. So they went back and actually fixed them, which is a cool move in my opinion, at least. And I'm actually editing right now a video about this, but a lot of people were upset about Exorcist Believer already having its sequel, Exorcist Deceiver Greenlit, but that's kind of what everyone was asking for with Halloween after Halloween Kills and Ends were sort of like rushed into production and didn't really have a plan associated to them, right? Like the original plan was to make a movie with that flashback we saw in Halloween Kills and then Halloween Kills just ended up being an extended ending and Halloween Ends is like a completely different standalone movie. So people were like, yeah, they should kind of plan this stuff out before they green light it. So that's exactly what they're doing with The Exorcist. So yeah, I understand why people are upset with Blumhouse because as much as I love the last three Halloween movies, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like they all feel like a coherent whole picture, right? Like they all feel very different from each other. But yeah, as for what I want out of this movie, obviously I think it'd be cool to have Robert England back in some capacity, whether he's gonna play a new main character or play Freddy in flashbacks or play old Freddy who then regenerates into a new actor. I just want him involved in this movie. I also would really like to see Heather Langenkamp involved in some way if they can figure out how to retcon uh, the third movie without really messing it up because Dream Warriors is awesome and I don't want them to delete that from the franchise. As far as directors go, there are so many choices I could pick like David Gordon, no, I'm just kidding. I don't want David Gordon Green to work on this. He could go have The Exorcist. I would really love to see Radio Silence take over this because we just got the news today that Scream 7 is going to be handled by Christopher Landon, who's the guy behind Happy Death Day, Happy Death Day to You and Freaky. I am totally on board with him doing a Scream movie. I think he's great for that. And I was excited to see Radio Silence kind of go and do something original with a lot of the people they worked on Scream with. But, you know, I'd like to see them take over A Nightmare on Elm Street because I think they'd be perfect for it. Andy Muschietti is someone who I was kind of like assuming would get this movie after It Chapter 2 did pretty well because if you look at the plot breakdown of It Chapter 2, the way that movie is structured is literally just a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. So it seemed like he was setting himself up with a T on that one. But you know, I like a lot of the stuff in his movies, like the stories in Mama and the It movies and The Flash are all pretty good. I just don't like the way he uses CG and I really don't like how much CGI he uses. So if I saw his name attached to a new Nightmare on Elm Street, I would be like, man, it looks like we are going to get a CGI Freddy Krueger. Another great option for this movie would be the Racka Racka Boys. My friend Cortland, who I made the two Happy Halloween movies with, and I helped him out with a ton of stuff on his channel, Oddest of the Odd. He's friends with the Racka Racka Boys, and he actually got to work on a lot of stuff and talk to me, their new movie, which is an incredible movie. I'm just telling you that to let you know that any opinion I have on the movie is tainted because because I just am gonna tell you it's amazing and you gotta go see it regardless because one of my friends worked on it and he has said nothing but great things to say
say about the Racker Rack of Boys. And I think if anyone gets the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, it would definitely be them. But of course, I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. I already know a lot of people are gonna be upset that Blumhouse is involved. Feel free to fire off on that. I'm still gonna just wait and see if they are involved and when they are, I'll report on it as well. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, I moved back to Michigan. That's why I am on the third canonical set, I think in this channel's franchise history. I don't know. I have had a few other sets like Austin Evans office, but as far as permanent sets go, this is the third one. I'm still getting set up here. I literally just moved in a month ago and you know, moving from an apartment to a house, a lot of my stuff still isn't unpacked. But the first thing I had to unpack, I got a point right, is my Michael Myers mask. And then you can't really see him, but Sam is right there. And then over on the other side over here, I've got my Michael Myers hot toy and things like that. I don't even know why I'm rambling about this. I just want to say I'm back making videos. I needed some time off so I could get this move situated and work on PS ready. But yeah, it feels like I'm ready to start making more horror videos. I just hope you'll stick around and watch them because that's what makes making videos fun for me. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the subscribe button, set your notifications to all, and maybe tell a friend about the channel. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.